Hi everyone, um, welcome to week three of our scavenger hunt. Um, the topic this week is plants, microorganisms, and pollinators. Um, so let's get started. Um, this week, the first item is flowers. Um, uh, plants use flowers to um, reproduce, to make um, seeds and create more plants. Um, the pollen from their flowers uh, has to be transferred between flowers of the same species by wind, water, animals, um, or insects. And these animals or insects are called pollinators. So uh, I have some pictures here, so I'm a little late, um, of some flowers. The Maryland State Flower is the Black um, Eyed Susan, which is the yellow one here. Um, which blooms from June to October. Um, there's also the Eastern Columbine, which is a r r red flower. Um, I don't have it pictured here. Uh, and this is the New York Ironweed. So these are some native um, flowers to Maryland. The second item is bees and butterflies, or pollinators. Um, there are over 400 bee and 150 butterfly species in Maryland. Um, it's a lot. So. Uh, uh, around 80% of flowering plants in the whole world um, require pollinators to move pollen between their flowers so that they can reproduce. Um, so our pollinators are really important. Um, other pollinators include hummingbirds um, and uh, fruit bats, um, but they are not, you know, not as common to see. Um, but you could look for those too. Um, and yeah, so a lot of, we've had um, poll uh, issues of our bees dying off and pollinators um, suffering. Um, so some things that you can do um, in your yard or neighborhood is to um, plant more native flowers uh, and to limit your pesticide and herbicide use because a lot of those are really toxic for them. Um, so some pictures, some more pictures here. Um, we've got a... Um, monarch butterfly on some of the, um, oh goodness, am I forgetting? It's, uh, is it milkweed maybe? Um, it's a flower that, uh, is, is native to Maryland. Um, it's actually, um, I think it's grown around, like, farms, um, or you can find around the edges of farm fields, but, uh, there has been some loss of it over the years, um, so that's an important flower for um, monarch butterflies, which are a endangered species. Um, and then we've also got some bees here on some flowers, so some pictures for you to look at. Um, and then our third item is wild berries, um, or like other wild fruit in the forest. Um, but special important note, do not consume these berries unless you're like an expert or have an expert advice or guide I'm not an expert um, I'll show you some but uh, make sure that you know you do your research you get the advice because you can also find very poisonous ones um, so the some of the uh, native berries in uh, Maryland um, are red mulberries um, which look kind of like blackberries and they grow in trees um, often near streams. Uh, another one is, so this is the um, mulberry here. Um, and then the other one is the um, service berry or June berry, which looks more like a uh, blueberry and it's um, smaller trees in drier areas. Um, and then there's also, you know, wild strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, you know, lots of wild fruits. Um, but yeah, you need to do your research so that you don't consume bad berries. Um, another interesting thing that I learned um, getting ready for this was that um, well-pollinated flowers create better berries. So sometimes um, like you'll see strawberries that are misshapen or misformed and it's because part of them was like pollinated but part of them wasn't so that's another reason why pollinators are so important you get your better berries to eat um, 
so yeah interesting interesting thing there uh our fourth item is moss um some pictures here so moss uh is are also moss is also a plant but it's a small flowerless plant um they um they don't so yeah they don't flower i think it's the they're like also not vascular i think that's what it is um but they so they form clumps or mats um in damp shady areas like forest floors so you can look in the forest floor um and then um all right let me just get this picture ready here i got some mosses here um they're from maryland um i don't have the exact names but if you look at like university of maryland extension or uh, maryland department of natural resources they have some good information on identifying um different species um so another thing is that um so moss is a little different because they create spores to um to regrow and reproduce so they're like tiny little microscopic um uh things that you can't really see uh and they also can actually reproduce through um like just branching out um or regrowing from little pieces of themselves so um they they are it's a different like there's so many different things in the plant kingdom. So you can really, you know, it's not your normal flower tree. So it's it's kind of its own thing. It's interesting to find out about. Um, moss is also important because it uh, breaks down um, and releases nutrients from the surfaces it's on, which can be helpful to um, future uh, plants that come along. Um, and they also provide soil erosion uh, control. So that's another important thing that they do. So, you know, you might be like, oh, I don't like that moss there, but you know, sometimes it, it's actually useful. You know, it's all part of our ecosystem. Uh, and one last thing is that there are some small plants that are called mosses, but they're not actually, scientifically speaking, mosses. Um, they are algae, lichen, air plants, ferns, so, um, you know, might look or be called moss, but it's not actually moss. <laughs> um, yeah, and our fifth item, last but not least, um, are mushrooms or fungus. Um, so mushrooms are not plants, they're actually, they're a different kingdom, um, they're part of the fungi kingdom, um, which also includes like mold and yeast um, and that other sort of stuff. So they don't have, they don't have chlorophyll and they actually, the, um, the way they make their structures, it's the same thing that like anthropods and like some insects make their, um, coatings out of. So they're kind of unique. Um, and so they get their nutrients from, um, breaking down dead plants, um, in the forest floor. So they're, they're very important, um, decomposers of wood. Um, so I've got some pictures here. These are also in Maryland. Uh, it's uh, morals and um, porcinis, maybe? Um, but yeah, you can do, do more research. You can learn about the different kinds. Um, there are people who harvest mushrooms, but you know, do your research. I'm not an expert. <laughs> um, so uh, another way to think about it is that um, some fungi produce mushrooms. Mushrooms are like their flowers. So um, the mushrooms produce all these tiny microscopic spores, kind of like the moss does, um, sometimes in the trillions, a lot of little spores. Um, and the rest, the rest of the fungi is actually below the ground. Um, and they're like all these little threads, white like threads called mycelium. Um, so mushrooms can actually, or the fungus that you know mushrooms are part of, um, can cover a really large amount of area, um, even like miles, hectares, whatever it is. Um, so there, there's a lot more going on beneath the ground um, that we don't know about, that we're still learning about. Um, 
And one last interesting thing about uh, mushrooms um, is that some of these um, funguses, the mushrooms, they um, have special symbiotic relationships with certain plants, which is called mycorrhizal, mycorrhizal, um, which means they can't grow anywhere else. So there are some people who like cultivate mushrooms, they grow them, um, but there are some kinds that you just can't because they exist, coexist with certain trees and you just can't, no one's found a way to do that um, in a controlled human created setting. Um, so yeah, get out, get out in um, your neighborhood, your forests, even in your yard. I found some like weird fungus in my tiny yard in the wood chips, so you know, you can find it anywhere. Um, get out, look for these things, um, send us photos, and uh, yeah, just get out, enjoy that nature, and um, stay safe. Um, have a good day. And now I'm gonna do it in Spanish. Hola, um, hoy es el tercer, la tercer, tercer semana um, de la búsqueda. Um, el tema esta semana es de las plantas, microorganismos y la polinización. Um, el primer artículo es las plantas, uh, no, <laughs> las flores. Uh, las flores, um, las plantas utilizan las flores como una herramienta para repro reproducir y hacer um, sus semillas. Um, el polen de las flores um, tiene que ser transferido entre las flores del mismo especie. Um, por el viento, uh, agua, animales, insectos. Los animales y insectos uh, se llaman polinizadores. Um, y esos son muy importantes para nuestro ecosistema. Uh, así que hay, uh, tengo algunas fotos aquí de algunas flores nativos en Maryland. Um, tenemos el Black Eyed Susan, cual es amarillo, um, que florece desde junio a octubre. Um, tan, también tenemos el Eastern Columbine, que es rojo, no tengo una foto aquí, pero se puede buscar en línea en uh, la red. Um, y esta es el New York Ironweed. Así que algunas flores nativas que se puede buscar en su vecindario. Um, el segundo artículo es las abejas y mariposas. Um, en algunas fotos aquí. Um, hay más que 400 especies de abejas y 150 especies de mariposas en Maryland. Um, y más de 80% de las plantas que florecen en el mundo requieren las palinasías polinizadores um, para mover el polen entre las flores. Um, así que es, esos um, animales son muy importantes para nuestro ecosistema. Además, los picaflores o colibris um, y los murciélagos de fruta um, también son polinizadores, pero un poco, un poco más difícil para encontrar. Um, así que para ayudar a nuestros polinizadores, um, porque tenemos, um, es, algunos están en peligro, como las abejas, um, o es aquí las mariposas, um, en las flores nativos, um, tenemos que um, plantar um, plantas nativos y um, Um, reducir nuestro um, uso de los pesticidas y herbicidas um, porque se pueden ser muy peligrosos para los polinizadores. El um, tercer artículo es las bayas silvestres o frutas del bosque. Um, una nota importante no, no consuma esas bayas si no, si no tienes, um, a menos que tenga um, consejos expertos. 
no, no soy un experto y se puede ser peligroso. Así que tiene que buscar guías, consultar um, los expertos. El, la Universidad de Maryland y el um, Departamento de Recursos Naturales tiene algunos guías um, si quiere aprender más. Así que uh, aquí es el Red Mulberry o Mora Roja que parece un poco como las moras, um, pero crece en los árboles, uh, típicamente cerca de arroyos, como discutimos la semana pasada. Um, también hay service berries o june berries, como, que parecen como um, arándanos, aquí, que um, crecen en árboles pequeños en lugares un poco más secos. Uh, también hay um, fresas, arándanos, moras, frambuesas um, silvestres. Así que se pueden encontrar muchos um, tipos de bayas. Um, y un hecho interesante es que las flores um, bien polinizadas um, crean um, bayas mejores. Eh, eso es porque a veces las um, fresas parecen deformadas porque la, um, hubo menos visitantes de los polinizadores. Um, y el cuarto artículo es el mos no, sí, el mosco. Um, Se puede ver aquí es um, el mosco es diferente de las otras plantas porque um, no tienen flores y sus uh, estructuras son diferentes um, así que sí son son pequeñas um, plantas terrestres sin flores um, y forman grupos o esteras en el piso del bosque um, en lugares húmedas y sombreadas y um, crecen en una manera un poco diferente um, producen pequeñas esporas que son como polen o semillas para reproducir o um, se puede ramificar um, y utilizar sus ramas para crecer otras plantas Um, o se puede um, volver a crecer de uh, pequeñas piezas de, um, de sus hojas o tallos. Um, el mosco es importante porque um, descomponen los subsuelos para liberar nutrientes que las siguientes plantas pueden utilizar para crecer bien. Y además um, proporciona control del subsuelo um, de, pa, de la erosión del suelo. Así que son, son uh, bien importantes en nuestro ecosistema, aunque a veces no, no lo vemos así. Um, además, Um, hay algunas plantas pequeñas que se llaman moscas, pero no o musgo, pero actualmente no son musgo, son um, algas, líquenes, plantas areas, areas, helechos. Um, así que sí, científicamente son, son diferentes. Y el quinto artículo es los hongos um, hongos no son plantas son microorganismos um, son parte del um, reino de hongos um, que incluye el mojo y levedora y otras especies Um, no tienen clorofila como plantas y actualmente reciben sus nutrientes al descomponer uh, plantas muertas. Um, y muchos uh, hongos 
son importantes en ese proceso de ser descomponedores como de madera para nuestros bosques. Um, lo que es interesante, eh, los, así que los hongos, esa parte de arriba, um, son como las flores del, um, de todo el hongo. Um, los hongos producen pequeñas um, esporas microscópicos a veces en los pichones. Um, y el resto del hongo vive debajo del, um, del, del piso, del suelo, del bosque um, y, o en madera y son pequeñas, parecen como pequeños hilos um, y se llama micelio. Así que en total los, los hongos arriba son una pequeña parte de todo el, del hongo. Es, hay mucho más de, debajo que no podemos ver um, y a veces es muy grande. Um, así que seguimos aprendiendo so sobre los hongos. Y uh, una cosa más es que algunas especies de hongos tienen relaciones especiales um, simbóticas con um, algunas plantas específicas. Um, y esta relación se llama micoriquicas. Y no pueden crecer en um, otros lugares. Um, no se puede cultivarlos. Um, porque algunas personas cultivan los um, hongos, pero hay algunas especies que no se puede porque um, requiere un ambiente muy específico y especial. Así que. Eso es todo para hoy. Um, Estas son las quintas cosas. Flores, abejas y mariposas, bayas silvestres, musgo y hongos. Así que espero que um, disfruten um, y se pueden mandarnos um, sus fotos um, y que um, tengan un buen día. Nos vemos. Chao.